and remind us from last session. Sebastian is in a wheelchair. Teachers are dangerous. I, as it was actually really tragic, I, I listened back to the episode before last on Sunday for editing, um, and Carl getting lucky so frequently and just waiting for the axe to draw, uh, to fall and, and <laughs> <laughs> the next session. Suddenly. Dear. Sorry, can I have that first reminder again? Uh, Sebastian is in a wheelchair. Ah, yes. Yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, cull the weak civilians. What? I don't remember who left that. That might have been an angry Carl. I don't uh, think that was me. Cull the weak that civilians? Me? What situation were you in? I've, I haven't looked at my notes yet. I should do that. Right, I think that you... one would have been Ollie. <laughs> uh, it might well have been Ollie, actually. I don't know, Ollie's a good working class boy. Maybe not. <laughs> the um, last note I have is, there is a garden centre in Tutley. Oh yeah, there is a garden centre in Tutley. That was vital. <laughs> I kept that um, noted for prosperity. <laughs> School teacher started talking about Caesar and the legions. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's how Cole got injured. I suppose that should probably be um, what's his thing in the legions actually, um, Claudius. Uh, Coral's minus two applies to physical slash physically strenuous role pulls. Um, it wouldn't be Claudius because he would have had you killed if you pulled him that. What Caesar? Yeah, Claudius yeah. No, Caesar, I, I, I mean, I I wrote I like I said Caesar at the time, but. <laughs> didn't think that like Caesar didn't actually get anywhere near here. Um, actually, I don't know if Claudius did either. It was just the southern bit of Britain, wasn't it, initially? So I don't know Claudius what Claudius did get pretty far in. Yeah, but again, I, he wouldn't have been called thing. Claudius. It's just because he would have had you killed for calling him Claudius. <laughs> yes. His name was Gaius Julius Caesar. It, Claudius was his cute nickname from when he was a babble. Which yeah. he brutally killed anyone who called him that. <laughs> Do you know what Caligula's nickname was when he was a child? Oh, sorry, not, not Claudius. Claudius. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Caligula. It's, yeah. it's Little Boot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah exactly. It, that's, sorry, that's the one. I'm sorry, brain. But yeah, uh, Caligula brutally killed anyone who used yeah. his nickname because it means Little Boot. Because it's been a while since I've watched the Caesars, but you were saying it with such passion, I was thinking maybe I'm just misremembering the history. Benji's probably right, uh, but no. anyway, yes. Sorry. Um, the publican has been kept alive. Tango might be able to find the source with his magnet thing. The PCs are also magnetized. Benji got 9 XP from previous session. Don't know why he wanted that noted. Because uh, my uh, my sheet wasn't working. Oh, fair, fair. So uh, I wanted to... Roman influence might be susceptible to officer orders, question mark. I think that was a young Nicholas hope more than a you yep. had a clue pointing that. Yeah. Yeah, the British Empire is clearly the res- <laughs> the success. Roman one, they will in- they will just sort of imperial authority just works on a transient of property, doesn't it? I, I can mean, look technically, down at anyone actually, that I like. <laughs> so I believe we left you off in the the Tutley Arms, the Tutley Inn. Yep. With the publican locked up upstairs. Forcibly fed, uh, <coughs> and a wheelchair provided for Sebastian. Impromptu made. Have my clothes been cleaned yet? I don't believe they have actually. <laughs> no, no I was a little bit busy trying to render them in the yeah. You uh, promised them first thing in the morning, as it happens, but uh, quite a ways past that at this point. Well, I'll be in a different set of clothes by now, anyway. I'm sure. Fair. Okay, gents. What are we doing? Presumably well, trying to shit. stabilize uh, Sebastian Thornbury. He's he's stabilized. You finished that off at the end of the last session. He's stabilized and has slept it off and has had a. Uh, he's been bandaged with whatever you've been able to find uh, and has had the little wheelchair thing made for him. It's, I think, in the late afternoon now, uh, mid afternoon, like two, three <laughs> o'clock. Because he passed out after the surgery, and then um, the currently schlorped Holden Twight worked on making him a wheelchair with some interruptions. So you're sort of looking for direction now, really. Yeah, we don't have much solid yet. We suspect that hill, and we have now had someone shouting about Romans and know that that hill is a Roman burial something or site of a war. Yes. 
So I reckon either we can potter straight to White Mountain and figure out what's going on there, or poke more locals and see if we don't get stabbed again. I mean, I think the aim is to not get stabbed again, but you know. The idea. Let's see how many times I can get stabbed without dying. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. I'm just joking. Please, dice gods, don't take that as a red. <laughs> The great dice god random roll. Uh, do we not just go with Nuffle? Nuffle is Blood Bowl. Yeah, but I mean, like. Also, you do not, like, why would you opt in for Nuffle? Nuffle will fuck you over. Yeah. <clears throat> also, won't pay it student athletes. Student Bastard. athlete. <laughs> Always reminds I'm me. I'm glad you knew exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> so, what are we doing, gents? Sounds like you've got a few clues, you've got a few uh, non-clues, you've got a few suspicions. Where are um, we going? Uh, I have a question about my wheelchair. Yes. Um, do I have big wheels? Yes, I think they, well, uh, I'm not sure how big they are, but they're, it's a, it was specifically built to be able to off-road pretty well. It's, it's oh, a, well, not necessarily that. Like, So I can like mobilize under my own like power rather than having to get pushed. I think Ollie got some ridiculous number of successes on your wheelchair, so it's not motorized, but we'll say it's like hand cranked. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going for. Cool. Sorry, I meant with like, like a literal a literal crank because they're wheelbarrow wheels he got, right? So I don't know how okay. they're big enough for that. But right. could, so it's kind of like ski poles. It's the only abundant thing yeah, in the village. Yeah, fucking. Why not? They're, do you want do you want a single ski pole that does everything, or do you want two ski poles? Can I have two ski poles two, for easy two turning? Ski poles, sure. The gondolas of the north. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't stop picturing the wheelchair, and, and it yeah, makes me great. deeply happy. The off-roading Yorkshire Moor wheelchair, wheelbarrow chair. <clears throat> In that case, I suppose Sebastian, as the ranking officer on the expedition, you. Uh, you come to in the afternoon and are introduced to your wheelchair. The day is nearly half gone. What say we, lads? Question the villagers more, or go to our suspected locale? I think well. we should ascertain that the villagers are not, in fact, a danger to any more, more of the gentlemen. I'd slowly swivel my head and look directly at you. Hey guys, oh. Holden White <laughs> pops in with a such, short. Such other for, such others would pose c- certain dangers to you, sir, as well. So I'm basically saying we kill anyone and anyone who looks like a threat at this point. They've already proven to be damned treacherous bastards. That do we could, have enough bullets for the entire village? That could be anywhere between um, a few hundred and um, give or take a thousand, uh, give or take a, a hundred either side of a thousand people. Is How many bullets do we have? Well, massacring peasants is all well and good, but I'm not sure it'll get us any more information. It'll keep us safe, though. Indeed. I feel quite safe right now, to be honest. Other than the fact that we're all magnetic. We're all what? Ah, oh, you know my grand magnetron? Well, I noticed those afflicted appear to give off a magnetic field. It appears we too are beginning to give one off, although weaker, if I recall correctly. Ah, so what you're saying is that the longer we're here, the closer to madness we get to. Indeed. Ah. Nyah, nyah, nyah. <laughs> nyah. <laughs> nyah, nyah. <laughs> I believe I'm the Thornbury here. If anything else, should... <laughs> nyah. <laughs> Somewhat perturbed, the gentlemen revert to the ancient cries of their warrior people. <laughs> The notion of collapsing into madness fills them with a deep existential dread that can only be expressed through the soul-crushing medium of the Nya. We are the gentlemen of Nya! Oh dear. Naturally, Reginald Foxley Smythe would be, I suppose, aware of what this means. Indeed. Okay. Um... (laughs) Uh, In that case, I suggest we uh, solve this uh, toot sweet. Um, you say yes. we head for the mountain? Yes, yes. Um, Ewan, will I theoretically have some knowledge of, of magnets, I suppose, uh, being as one of my 
science, my material science is four dots. Sorry, my science is four dots of material science. Not Are there magnets the, in old tanks? Not in the the same way as as Creed, I'm afraid. Um, I'm thinking you, maybe I could you'd know run. like actual scientific principles of magnets. He's running on uh, fuck. What was it called, Creed? What's your pseudoscience? Oh, I don't think I jot down the name for. But I'm wondering if, if it's a magnetic field. Like I even know nowadays that you can use something. You know, um, use. Uh, is it is it literally just magnetism? Because I feel like I could probably just create like a, some sort of more improved tinfoil hat. <laughs> uh, no. So um, you're essentially coming at it from a from a different lens. Um, <laughs> it's it's like how there are many different types of physicists, um, or indeed. Um, Mechanists, I guess. Uh, you you have an understanding of like actual um, principles of um, magnets as they relate to mechanical things to do with building tanks and that uh, and related fields. You're whereas... probably looking solely at ferromagnesis, whereas Creed is looking at magnesis uh, magnetism in terms of waves and stuff like that, which is a bit more advanced and slightly magicy in this sense. Yeah, like if if nothing else, you're you're coming at it from an actual science point of view. He's coming at it from a ma- magical woo point of view. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so it's totally separate, essentially. But basically, you know, Holborn here's magnetism is like, well, we know that you know we can put you know something the equivalent of tin foil around an object and contain magnetism. So he may not do anything, but he would like to see if he can make a magnetic. <laughs> Oh, like, Faraday. Is Faraday around yet? When was Faraday? Faraday's dead at this point. Yeah. Oh, we must know of the Faraday cage then, right? <laughs> Can we just establish that that's not related necessarily to magnetism? But I'm thinking I could create posh um, ish. You know, you know, tinfoil hats that don't look like tinfoil hats, essentially. So uh, if you can make me a hat that looks fine, I may deign to wear it. Mesmerism, that's what it was called. Uh, magnetic fluid. Da, 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 da. Um. <laughs> Uh, cool. So it sounds similar to you, uh, Holborn Twite, but Woodrow Tango, I'm afraid, would be uh, cripplingly aware of the the threat that actual science poses to your mesmerism, um, oh, yeah. and how he will fundamentally misunderstand it with his facts and logic. Mm. All right. Okay, I'm sorry, no. good sir. You're simply incapable of comprehending this level of scientific paranormal expertise. Leave I, it to the experts, they jump. <laughs> I bristle. I bristle with my four dots in a cult. I bristle at you, sir. <laughs> and I flourish with my five dots. <laughs> <laughs> my five dots of craft mechanic may not come in helpful here, but at least I have five dots. <laughs> and my five dots of manipulation say, let's get a move on. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like Timothy Popajack is setting a pace. Where are we going, Timothy? Uh, the White Mountain. <laughs> the group sets out with Sebastian Thornbury wheeling along with his hand cranked wheelchair. Oh, why did we? Um, why, why are we moving to White Mountain? What did I miss in like the five, ten, five, ten? Oh, we were literally just deciding where to go. Whether yeah. or not okay. to push townsfolk more or go straight mountain. Okay, cool. And White Mountain seems to be where people occasionally are heading off to, so it makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, we heard um, rumours of it being related to a Roman battle before, and then a peasant shouted at us in Latin about the Romans. So, yeah, sure boy. I'm down for this. Boy. Sorry if you hear uh, my baby talk in the background. I'm not going to lie, it sounded like you just told your baby oi, which I, was great. I, I couldn't tell if you were talking to your dog, your baby, or Ollie. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But I do I, require. I, I like to Ollie think of is you a puppy, a, which is technically a, a, a baby dog. So I like to think of you as a good boy, Ollie. I fucking hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> so the group reluctantly parties out and taking up the supplies you gathered yesterday, head out onto the moor. You can see White Mountain rising in the distance, less a mountain and more a long sloping hill. No matter where you look on the moor. Everything seems to gradually point upwards toward it, uh, towards it, the lands running up at a very slight angle so that the entire sky, the very horizon itself, seems drawn to the swell of the summit. Just a um, little bit out of view from your point. Sorry, Ollie? 
as we're walking towards it, I would like to take out, uh, keep an eye out for like odd looking bits of, I don't know, pottery or flint or something that looks shaped maybe. Um, cause you know, occasionally that sort of stuff can be found and on the surface, undisturbed, just oh. laying a chair and rock. So I want to see if there's anything that proves this Roman hypothesis. Hypothesis. Okay. Um, let's take a Again. look. I will take perception alertness, please. Difficulty, difficulty seven. I was hoping I could take science instead because I have material science, and so I could very aware, be a, very much be aware of a. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I'm material science. Material is science different. for archaeology. Yeah, I think you could maybe have swung academics, but I'm. I'm I have a mater- degree that contains material science. I am not an archaeologist. But my no, direction is archaeology. left and right. Saying, no, saying material saying science would be more for like knowing the specific tensile strengths of varying compositions yeah, of steel. Yeah. I thought maybe just the, you know you could look at it and be like you could, ah, if you if you maybe. had one I think you'd be I, I I see where you're coming from you were thinking like oh you'd better maybe. be able to tell um like this or that rock is probably uh, it seems like it's been napped that type of thing yeah, exactly. oh, really. is that a success yes you know what with your material science as oh, you're walking sleep. towards the mountain you're able to find a rock that looks like it's been napped that does not look like a natural formation to you that looks like it's got a distinct slight edge to it. Picking it up. Oh, it's and... edgy now. God damn it! Yes, it is an edged rock, Carl. <laughs> Picking it up and turning it end over end. It's been edged for thousands of years. <laughs> I knew someone was going to make that joke. I thought it Carl. So rare that Nick makes a horny joke. He's more about genocide. My bro he is actually. And Nick like attempted cannibalism. Uh, oh, I, uh, sorry. sorry, Creed. On a largely unrelated tangent, uh, if we were to remove a door frame from a building and slam it in the mud, would that be a doorway? I don't think so. It's got to. It's got to lead <laughs> somewhere, mean, right? It's um, a doorway, right? So it's it's not a doorway in the literal sense. It's, it's a doorway. <laughs> it no, but a like doorway has to lead. A doorway, by definition, has to lead somewhere. Yeah, it's a doorway. You're saying it has to be like a portal. Mud. I'm saying it's it's a it's got to be at least metaphorically a doorway as well, right? So if you place that over the entrance to a cave, that would count. If you placed it just like into the mud, that wouldn't count. If you dug a pit and then put the doorway over it, that would count. How about right. the puddles? If it's metaphorical doorways, do puddles and, and uh, mirrors count? If it's metaphorical doorways, then if you're looking for a portable portal thing, the most obvious solution, oh. which I feel fully comfortable suggesting, you would definitely have thought of is a tent. Oh. <laughs> just, just before you go stripping the pub for, for door frames. <laughs> uh, I'll forget that for now, anyway. For now. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, so, Holborn Twite, uh, you've acquired this rock and it, it looks um, like it may once have been used for some Awful purpose. Does do any of you have any supernatural senses whatsoever? Uh, no. I'm assuming that's it's very specific and obvious if we do. Um, yeah, something equivalent to specs usually, uh, or oh. otherwise, like a numina that does similar. No, it's all right. If not, yeah, I'm, you, well, I'm, I'm going to plan. I was planning on telling the group and giving it to Creed. To see if uh, he can detect anything from it. I'll point my magnet stick at it. <laughs> cool. What have we been giving you for that? It was uh, science something, right? Uh, it might have been science or technology perception, maybe? Was the previous ones, although this might be different to perception. Yeah. Let's take a look. Oh. Science. Yeah, we'll just do this. Uh, science perception diff 7, please. Sure, sure. Science. Oh, three. Oh dear. That's uh, only a simple failure, but shame about the uh, the ones. Oh yeah, I didn't see the nine. I thought I was bugged. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out immediately. Magnet explodes. <laughs> <coughs> now, 
Yeah, you're not getting a clear reading. If anything, your your magnet doohickey is uh, going a little bit haywire, detecting fluctuations in the magnetic field, in the oh, magnetic liquids running through the groundwater uh, of the entire local area, the closer you get to White Mountain. Damn it, Holborn, must have been your science talk. The thing's not working. <laughs> Maybe just your science isn't actually science. Poppycock! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I just walk away. With my rock. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, is it really necessary to create such discord within the group? Oh, you're right. I forgot myself, brother. Exactly. I think, I think that bone, uh, that bone, that burn fulfills your demeanor, Ollie. So we'll give you a, and it was a very sick burn. So even though it's your demeanor, we'll give you a willpower point. Oh, thank you. The group carries on towards uh, White Mountain. The hike takes you into the early evening. The daylight is just beginning to die, leaving a lazy, low-hanging twilight that seems to descend straight down from the heavens above, soaking into the ground all around you, tinting everything just the slightest shade of pink as the sun starts to dip below the horizon. White Mountain is ever so slightly windy, and in spite, uh, yet in spite of that, it is incredibly wind swept it feels cold and as you each set foot on it for the first time a strange fatigue a malaise overcomes you something that saps your will to continue climbing not irreparably so but the desire to go forward is reduced the mountain itself is again much less a mountain more of a colossal, unsettling molehill, sides tamped down and grown with rocky, moorish grass. In the distance, from the direction of southern Lockwood, you hear a very, very remote howl. What do, Gentlemen, folks? One. I ready my rifle. <laughs> I will know what it was. Mm. Any of you from Yorkshire at all? No. Uh, anyone else from Yorkshire or anywhere else with moors, I guess? Dartmoor or anywhere much of the north, actually? Nope. <laughs> no, well, if that's your first time here, then, folks, you are all inexperienced with the acoustics of the moors. Acoustics that carry for miles and miles and miles. Acoustics that can make a roar that's quite far away sound quite close, and vice versa if it echoes off the wrong hills. Uh, going off how fast it was chasing the car the other day, how fast can I can I have a jab at reckoning how long it might take to run here? Depends how it does cross country, but you'd uh, guesstimate that if it start uh, if that was uh, what attacked you and it started coming for you, there's no way you could run. Actually, the only place that's safe within any kind of range is White Mountain itself. No, I, I'm thinking uh, just uh, the amount of time it would take to get here. Um, difficult to say, but not long. Hmm. If that thing comes for us, we'll get here pretty fast. It was chasing after the car and even gaining upon us last time, was it not? Yes. It was a quick beast. It did stop chasing us after a time. It stopped chasing us at the edge of the forest, didn't it? Indeed. We can at the very least hope that it's confined there. Worry about it for the return journey. Can we tell roughly which direction it came from at all? Like, just general? Or not at all? Yes, you absolutely can tell what direction it uh, came from. It sounded like it came from Southern Lockwood. Southern Lockwood. Oh, that tracks, so... <laughs> mm. uh, I don't think I have a scope on my gun, so I can't train. There's no point in me training it. And it'd be too far away anyway, so... I do, I was like, actually, no, wait, do I have? No, I have mechanics tools, I don't really. I only have one dot in armory. As the five of you, sorry? Would one dot in armory give me a scope? I know we scaled down armory for... Probably not have. that you packed for the... You, you know what, if you want to have a pair of binoculars, Ollie, you can have brought a pair of binoculars. Yeah, I've brought a pair of binoculars. I, I look out towards Southern Lockwood and see if I can see anything. Uh, perception, alertness, diff 9. Sure. That's again 3d10. I really should buy alertness. 
I don't know. I quite like that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jammy son of a bitch. You fancy you can catch a slight hint of movement at the very edge of the tree line, sauntering around near the bridge. Something maybe distressing. Well, distressing the birds. What well, few remain. There definitely were some in the forest. Or else simply knocking branches out of the way. But it seems to be stalking if it's doing anything. Simply moving backwards and forwards. Is it round here sort of thing? Yeah. Cool. I, I let the rest of the group know that I've seen movement. I suspect there may be something out here. Oh, sorry, something around Tutu of Outworld by the bridge. If it's prowling, it means it's not coming for us. So Doesn't seem a problem for the moment, at least. Out of character. You must stay very, very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, turn around every so often, uh, like, sort of every couple of minutes, and keep an eye on it. By the way, does oh. my um, wheelchair have brakes? I think so. Ollie got like six successes, so it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it. Cool. They've got a cup holder. Um, sure, why not? <laughs> I'll allow it. I desperately want one. I mean, I, I've got my trusty bottle of whiskey with me at all times, so... <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> so, what are we doing? And I, and night, I have an oil. night is falling. Are we you're at White Mountain? Yeah, you're at the foot of the mountain. Uh, my magnet stick out. I'm proceeding to climb and check my readings. Cool. I will take uh, science of perception diff eight, please. Oh, one success. Net one success indeed. Unless you're ten, do you have a specialism that counts? No, I never remember how specialisms work, so I never get them. Once you got four dots, you can just put something in that text box next to the thing with four dots and that is the thing you specialise in. Uh, I get tied up trying to pick. So. <clears throat> to be fair, I don't think it actually applies for knowledges because you always have to have a specialty for a knowledge. You don't just get like everything when you specialise in academics. Um, so I don't think knowledges explode. But they don't explode anyway, but don't think count for two. Otherwise, you're, you're entirely correct. Um, no, that's unfair. In fact, I had this discussion last time. Why wouldn't it? Did, yeah. yeah, you can still... Yeah, ignore me. I'm being dumb. It would still count, absolutely. But it means you should get one anyway, because you already have skills in it. Um, cool. So, your mesmeric doohickey out. You begin traipsing up the hill, leaving the other four to argue over is or isn't something moving at the tree line. Yes, cat. something is moving at the tree line. Or is it? As you go, the fatigue gets worse and worse. Something just seems to leech the energy from your body as you walk. Your head begins to spin, your vision blurs, yet you fancy you can make out something, some pulsing in the waves. Perhaps a, a confluence of magnetic fluid in the groundwater deep below the mountain, some great lodestone or repository of magnetic power. You think there's something here? What do? Uh, and I had from the reminders, I should be able to identify if this matches with the field I had had on other people, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Or something to that effect? Yeah, I think we said that. It was like diff 8 or something. Yeah, same rule again, diff 8. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, how many wind boys do I have? Uh, I'm going to use willpower. Didn't need it. <laughs> Fuck hell. <laughs> uh, that's that's a net three successes. Oh god, Chris has stolen my curse. <laughs> yeah, what you no. you're gonna want to watch out for sharp objects. He's from the willpower. It's four successes. No, because it just doesn't want cancel. Um, one does cancel, but he didn't say spend Defeat. willpower. He just figured out how many he had and then rolled anyway. Oh, I did go to spend the willpower. I mean, I'd take it back if you'd let me. But... Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you say it. But no, fair. Okay, if you spent it, then it's four successes. That's a lot of successes. Um, it's not completely identical. 
But what it is, is extremely reminiscent, yet significantly more powerful. You're not necessarily the world's foremost expert on mesmeric power, but if you didn't know better, you'd say that the source of whatever is affecting the locals in Tutley Without Wold is located on, beneath, or somewhere nearby to White Mountain. Hmm. I'll shout over to the others if they're a bit behind. I definitely think somewhere around here is our spot. Old Magnetron lines up. Um, I... I oh, God. Like, internal dialogue. Should I fall back? Perhaps if he keeps being loud, the creature will get drawn to them and I'll have a chance to escape if I'm alone. <laughs> but, like, out of character, if you're alone, you're always the first to die in a horror movie. <laughs> Just remember, he's going to run faster than the guy in the wheelchair. Um... Do we have a compass? Not that I'm aware of. No. I'd like to think I explicitly don't carry them. I think it's a fake magnet science. Yeah. Compasses. And and I to be fair, I don't believe in North. His his um what's it called? Disruptions in the mesmeric magnetic field do not necessarily equate to actual uh, magnetic fluctuations. Ah, I see. That's why he was getting snippy with Ollie earlier. Uh, or rather with Holden Twite earlier for coming in with a like, oh hey, couldn't we use this to no, no, you couldn't use it, you can reproduce my results and also you smell <laughs> Fair enough um, uh, I have uh, uh, going uh, off Roman's uh, burials, it's likely to be underneath, I'd assume I don't believe the Romans built barrows actually um, famously a lot of Celts did uh, well, the Romans had to be fighting someone, right? The candidates are quite limited. <laughs> <laughs> Roman. If Romans wanted to hide something, how would they hide it and where would they hide it? Uh, usually uh, the same way you'd hide it. Uh, we're a very large, complex urban nation, and that gives them a lot of places to hide things. I think our question should be where would a significant will of the Romans reside or represent yes but they're all about they're, they're, they're quite a lot of symbolism right with the romans um yes and no actually I, I i would say compared to a lot of ancient peoples it's not that they didn't go in for it but they weren't into um like extremely precise ritual architecture to quite the same degree as a lot of other people um, you know, it's not like egypt with the pyramids lining up with various um astronomical formations no um, they started like eagles and all this jazz, didn't they? That that sort of thing. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Eagles, yes. Jazz hands, no. Uh, I don't like um, it. I think they were more just good architects, though. The stuff they built was yeah. fairly solid. They, 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 like, they were very good architects and engineers, generally. Mm. Um, they just didn't so, go much for ornamentation. Well, no, they went in for ornamentation, just just not in the, mm. like, this must be bo- uh, built to orientate yeah. magnetic north, exactly, yeah, and yeah. then line up I'm, with I'm these... More things like the mosaics, or the, you know, the mathematical precision of the way they laid out some of the... Yeah. Uh, stuff is really lack of feng shui. Yeah. Could I do some sort of occult role to determine if such an object exists where such a will could be anchored? If that makes any sense? Like, is there a way of I... keeping mm-hmm. will and desire in an area? Ah, or tying it to an area? I... Yeah, you know what? I'll take I'll take intercult at a hidden difficulty. Sure. Also, you described White Mountain as, like, a giant molehill. Yeah. Is that Im- implying... There's a dip in the top, is there? There is a dip in the top. Got ten. <laughs> You can think of a number of ways. Uh, not that you would know this at this point, technically speaking, uh, Timothy Popejack, as you've been kind of milling around the bottom of the hill, uh, the mountain rather, um, with the other four, whilst uh, Woodrow Tango increasing, uh, goes increasingly further up the mountain in search of magnetic fluids on his magnetron. Oh, magnet fluid. Um, yes, so, Woodrow Tango. You can think, even through your fogged brain, 
of uh, a number of ways in which one might anchor a will to a mountain. Now, as a mesmerist, the two big points for you would be perhaps some arcane pattern of uh, magnetic fluid laid out perhaps in a reservoir or aqueduct, or I suppose viaduct, um, beneath the mountain itself, or alternatively perhaps some gigantic curiously engraved lodestone manipulating the local magnetic pattern. In addition to that, uh, folklorically speaking, there's any number of, of potential options. Uh, some type of fairy or ghost or vampire or uh, what else is popular in the 19... 19s? Um, that's probably, those are probably the major options uh, for the time and period, yeah. Okay. So there's definitely things that exist that could do this. Well, uh, definitely things you've heard um, legends and myths of that could do this yeah. type of thing. Obviously, as a the character I am, I'm going to lead heavily into the magnet side. Yeah, that's the one that's... Like, you know that definitely there's magical ma- uh, mesmerism. You You work with it all the time. Ghosts, yeah. I'll shout to the others while they're in discussion. I've been pondering, gentlemen. I suspect this entire mountain may be some sort of gigantic magnetic keystone or lodestone, somehow concentrating an ancient will to influence the populace. That would imply that the will is at the centre, do you not? There is a hole in it. There is? There's a hole? <laughs> At the top, yes, as we were walking over. You haven't walked over it, young Nicholas. You've been stood at the bottom of the hill for like 20 minutes. As we walked towards it, you described it as a... a, Yeah, I said like a... a, And then after you asked this in clarification, I said, comma, not that you would know this yet as you've been stood at the bottom. It's a dip at the top of the hill. Well, I suggest we walk to the top of it and see if as a whole, potentially, we can go down. (laughs) Yes, Holman Twight comes in with a flash of inspiration. Riveting idea. I wish it to be noted that I'm frowning thoroughly. Hmm. Someone do get our good gentleman there up, won't you? <laughs> then I'll keep climbing. How's the character? <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> God damn it. Between the bristling moustaches and the constant ribaldry. Uh, I, I just look at Reginald to, uh, to push our friend up the hill. Yeah, I'm already walking ahead. Uh, Benji's currently muted, but I will assume that he wordlessly complies and begins pushing the good lieutenant up the hill. I think I remember your rank correctly, Carl, right? It was lieutenant. Yes. Yeah. I look at um, Benji's character pushing Carl's character. I'm like, look at all these people working together for the greater good. So nice to see. (laughs) This is our job. (laughs) Ah, uh, you know, there's selfish before. motivation in the end, my friend. I bet I could get a promotion if this goes well. <laughs> Self-preservation is the key. We must stay together, stay alive. And so the uh, group bickers and banters as they head up the hill, Woodrow Tango lolling back a little bit to allow the rest of you to catch up. Mere minutes later, you crest the very top of the swell of White Mountain. As we crest the top, I'd like to turn round with my binoculars and look back towards where I thought I saw the movement. There's no movement there now, but it could have moved just slightly into the forest, and you'd have lost it. Do I see see any bird disturbances rising from the trees? Not anymore, but there weren't that many. Yeah, I was going to say, aren't the moors, like, pretty fucking open? The moors are incredibly open. You have a clear view, especially this high up, from... Uh, the top of the mountain straight to the tree line. Tutley without Wald barely gets in the way at all. Don't see any wolf esque <laughs> silhouettes coming towards us, do we? Nothing that you've seen. Hmm. But it's can't getting darker, darker. Sorry? Towards, can I take a brief glance towards Catclock Point just while we have some light? You have a good view of it? Yeah, you do have a very good view of it, especially from the top. Have a little ponder that way. 
Well, we can see it. Good. Yeah, it's a much smaller hill, but you can make it out pretty distinctly as it's got a, an obelisk atop it. Uh, it might be a local stone monument. It might be an actual uh, ancient standing stone or just a curiously shaped boulder, but it stabs up into the darkness like an inky black finger. I'm curious of the local rumours of such place, having seen uh, Tango looking off towards it. Hmm. It's a dignified name, isn't it? A strong name. I think it sounds silly. <laughs> well, it could be quite refined. No, I don't think so. Well, that's got quite a sudden syllable to it, doesn't it? Cat clop. I mean, it's... Exactly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Some sort of child came up with it. You can have a point of willpower back here, Nicholas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> the top of the hill dips down again slightly, forming a very small natural bowl. At the very centre of that, there's a small stone structure, not visible from the base or even far away, the top of it just barely rising over the lip of the bowl, easily <coughs> camouflaged against the horizon. At the top of the hill, the oppressive weight you felt at the bottom and climbing up it, seems to gently drift away. Not a sudden melt, no great field of relief. But one moment you're aware of it, and the next you notice that it hasn't been there for some time. I'm going to start with... Mold hill a little bit. Yeah, I'm just attributing this to like the whole wheelchairness and now being pushed up the hill, I've had a chance to rest. Fair. <laughs> you can try to have a nap on the way up. The uh, small stone structure is a uh, hollow cuboid with empty stone uh, slots, which might once have been windows, though they show no sign of containing pane or shutter. <clears throat> Just barely large enough for a fully grown human to stand within. Uh I'm going to walk down towards the cuboid. One must almost say that they are akin to doorways. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's so it's got it's got two doorways I on uh, either side. But then, hi uh, Benji. Uh, but then what also, have, what have we done? Empty Flash, where are we? You've got uh, to the top of White Mountain. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, we crested the hill. There's a little bowl in it with a stone structure with some window-like holes and doors. And uh, the feeling of fatigue we had climbing the mountain is slowly slipping away. Um, I think it's not necessarily like a physical fatigue either, as much as like a mental fatigue. Yeah. Okay. Fatigue of willpower. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm walk down towards the cuboid, gun out, um, and in front of me, and I'm gonna walk up to one of the holes that isn't a door. You said one of them were like more like window yeah, holes. Yeah, they're windows. Yeah. <laughs> So you like going in through the exit, do you? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Into the general uh, realm with you. I'll be a bit behind observing his actions and pointing the magnets. <laughs> Everyone lets I, I, the working class man go out ahead. <laughs> yes, he's not my yeah, I took the pistol and observe. <laughs> Why do I feel like you're a commissar when you pull your pistol out? Um... Because he functionally to... is like he was a World War One infantry officer. You're not allowed to <laughs> shoot people as a World War One infantry officer. Not people <laughs> on your side. Well, uh, no, you just have them charged with cowardice and have someone else shoot them. That's what. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what that's the rank and file are for. That's not a commissar. <laughs> and and you only get in trouble if someone finds out. No, you get in trouble if you shoot people without following army regulation. Yeah, if you if you just murder people under your command, that will cause you issues. Well, if someone just walks in front of my shot while I'm trying to shoot a Nazi, it's not mm. my fault. Well, well, then you'd be time traveling because this is 1919. I think the Nazi. Okay, we'll call. They don't. Pace, they're but... not formed until 1921. When's Hitler join? Pace. 1925. Fair. Sorry. Um, cool. And I'm going to check for any signs if there actually were uh, any shutters or such in the in the hole. If there's any sort of sign of, of you know machine work, not machine work, sorry, chisel work, that sort of stuff. Like you know, I mean, obviously it's man-made, but you know, how much? Can, I want to ascertain how much work was done to it. I suppose, you know, was this once a solid cube? Was it several walls stacked together? That sort of thing. 
I guess I will take your material science over perception, please. Difficulty uh, six. Okay. It's not that difficult, but it's also not really your field. <laughs> <laughs> We're letting material uh, science stretch into archaeology in a way I would not have expected. But um, yeah. Here we are. Five successes. Five successes. Yeah, so it looks to you like this structure's been up here and standing for, for quite a while. The techniques used to break at the stone imply that it was handcrafted rather than machine crafted quite strongly. Uh, and there's no sign of it ever having had windows or doors. Just window, uh, empty uh, portals. And, Does the rock. Sorry. Does the rock look similar to the rock in the area, or is it completely different? It doesn't look particularly indistinct, uh, particularly distinct from it. But this is not paleontology, Carl. Um, but it, it doesn't. Uh, what's the one that bones does? Uh, osteology. No, not as in the study of bones. I mean the character in the TV show. Oh, I don't know. I've I've never actually seen it. It's that one. I always assumed what? she was an osteologist. What? Bone historian. Wait, what? No, bo- it, are we talking? She's a forensic scientist, isn't she? No, I'm going to call pace on this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but you, uh, you'd need to be better. Anthropology. At- that's it. Sorry, Fair. but oh. you need to be better at. Uh, it's just archaeology. Um, I've seen an amount of time team in my day. Uh, you'd need to be better at uh, geology to actually mm. know what type of stone it is specifically. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I, I relay what I've learned to the rest of the party, and I'm going to walk inside with a lamp or some form of light giving source. I think, I... to be fair, you all did gather your preparations yesterday, so it's fair to say you've probably got a lamp or two to the party. Um, I am low key, like deep down, bricking it with someone lighting a lamp at the top of this very open thing after hearing the howls, and I'm now terribly paranoid that we have just been targeted from what. We no, cannot he's, see. He's, he's down in the dip. Yeah, we're down in the dip, and I'm doing it inside the building as well. You're down in the dip. Okay, you never... The flickering light would, as all of you World War One veterans are well aware, illuminate the very top of the bowl against the horizon in a way that if someone were looking for it, would be not inobvious. What are you doing, you fool? Put that light out! Do you want answers, or do you want death? Or at least cover it up so it's only pointing where you need it. No, I would be on the lowest I think it can be. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to assume this is like you know. I don't think it's a gas oven. I think it's it's a candle, a oh. gas oven, gas um, lantern. Oh, okay. In which case, yep. Fine. We should. Uh, like I can only, I can only have two values on and off. The best you can do is like position your body in front of it a bit. And yeah. That's only helping mitigate it a tad. You proceed into okay. the tiny little room. Uh, perception awareness check, please, Holbert. That'll be oh, difficulty yeah. six. Uh, th- uh, yeah, do not make it. Simple failure. Seems perfectly ordinary to you. Uh, walk out, extinguish the candle as I do, to try and make sure not as much light spills out. And yeah, this, uh, this room, this structure looks pretty normal to me. I can't oh. see anything. Well, let me have a go. <laughs> Can I right. point my magnet Love the here? emphasis on me there. <laughs> I'll point my That's magnet stick here and see if it seems like any sort of focal point for these readings I can get. As, as I pass Carl's character, I say, I hope your science can find something. Put a heavy emphasis on the word science. Why my character? I do magic. Oh, right. Please. <laughs> yeah. <I'm a> wizard. <laughs> he straight up summons fireballs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not touching that one with the science barge pole. <laughs> so I will take science perception, please. Difficulty seven. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, oh, squeaky. Net one success. God, you've been getting a lot of ones and tens today. <laughs> <coughs> The signal is at once stronger and weaker up here, as though you were further away in some ways, yet closer in others. 
simultaneously, something feels odd about the structure. And it makes your readings extremely difficult to follow. You're still able to just about barely keep track of them, hence why you have any new information, but the the magnetic fields here are wonky. This far away from any kind of magnetic fluid in the groundwater. You're surprised by that. Towards the back, Pope Jack pulls out a sandwich and begins gently munching. Hmm. Anything detected? He's in a bit of pickle. It's not too bad. There's definitely something about this structure, I assure you. Uh, can I proceed inside it and just begin lightly tapping at bits of it to see if there's any other doorways or anything? Fair. Perception awareness, please. Difficulty six. Oh, what is my awareness? Do you say perception awareness? Yeah. That's net two successes. So. You tap at various bricks. Or stones, I suppose, rather. The structure is altogether too small to really be able to find much. Generally, everything seems like it's basically in place. But you can't help but feel a slight nagging sensation that there's definitely something in here that's you step towards the other small uh, side of the incredibly small structure just barely large enough to fit just you in it and you hear it your foot against the ground another tap confirms it it's not hollow but there's something not solid down there Looking down, you can see that the ground itself is simply earth. A thick layer of earth. What do? Gentlemen, I posit that if we were to dig within this structure, we might find something further. The floor is not stone, but more ground. And the science of looking, it served you well. Better than it served you. Oof. One one. Yes, I think it should lead us to the specialist <laughs> in the future. What do, folks? Savage I mean, time! Yeah! Did, did we all bring shovels? Spades? I don't think you brought shovels or spades. Uh, as you yeah. begin looking around through the kit for shovels, spades, perhaps even a large enough trowel, Sebastian Thornbury gently takes a sandwich out from the bag and begins eating. For me, he does. I do not wish to sound presumptuous, but given that I am an experienced bathman, we've been on many an expedition, and we are set, were we not sent here to investigate the source of these magical mishaps and what is happening to the town? And forgive me for being, again, slightly presumptuous, but having been on many an experienced uh, dig, digging down into the strange and ancient structure out on the creepy moor at the top of the creepy mountain is probably not the se- most sensible of ideas. I'd take other suggestions. Do you have a way of acquiring further knowledge on the subject? Sure, that we gather more magical means and come back as to ascertain whether or not this is indeed the spot from which the <laughs> magics are emanating. Perception oh, awareness, goodness. please, from whoever's got the highest. Um, uh, uh, I'm at I'm six. At, I'm at six as well. Seven. Um, like as this is going on, I was also going to say that um, it would uh, potentially be worth coming back during daylight hours as well. Hmm. I, I, as far as I w- confirming this is uh, the spot as well, can we roll just in case this is time sensitive, please? Yeah, fair enough. Diff <laughs> six. Diff six. I think that was best with seven, right? Yeah. Boom. Woodrow, you advance up towards the other two, uh, the other two, the other four. Um, Reginald and Holborn are discussing. Th- oh well, uh, Reginald is pitching things at Sebastian. Sebastian's thoughtfully munching on a sandwich. Timothy's likely thoughtfully munching on a sandwich. Holborn's presumably looking a little bit, you know, yeah, damn it, he should have found the floor thing. Um, <laughs> lost in his own world, plotting revenge. One assumes. Blocking the communist revolution. 
Yes. Not plotting revenge. Plotting the inevitable uprising of the proletariat. Mm -hmm. But, you know, potato, potato. All of them are distracted in one way or another. But you, Woodrow. Perfect timing. (laughs) Couldn't work out if I was a baby or... Fancy that you can hear a scuffling. A not too distant scuffling coming from further down the mountain. Wait a moment, gentlemen. I think I hear something. Scuffling from down the mountain. (laughs) Blast, I knew they would see the light. No, nope, I, I, if it's scuffling, I'm assuming it's the uh, barkeep once more. Maybe they heard us as well. That's also a possibility. Yeah, I'm full blind panic mode. Paranoia has taken over. Sorry, lads. No, no, no I'm sure it's fine. I, 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 I just brandishing my, my, my gun. I just like casually like crest the top and see who it is. I'm assuming it's fine. I want you to just get utterly taken out by a flying werewolf now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm moving to the opposite side of the hill. Scrabbling up the hill, wild-eyed and desperate, is a rather emaciated-looking man, perhaps in his late twenties. Are you any good at digging, sir? Woodrow pops up behind you. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you dig? Can you dig it? Do either of you speak Latin? Uh, I oh god, Latin it's another stabby thing. person. Keep Sorry. away from your precious insights. Uh, I have the academics you've asked for before. Fair, yeah. In that case, it'll be academics perception. Uh, how many academics you got? Two. Two. Uh, yeah, we'll call it academics perception diff. This is going to be a bit easier. Diff six, because it's not scrabbly and knife wieldy yet. I do not like it when my Latin is knife wieldy. It's got to be said. Simpy faily. <laughs> Simpy faily. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how we're phrasing that? <laughs> Not now. Um, and does Popajack speak Latin? Uh, you well, I've studied it in passing at school. Dot of more, uh, do you have a dot of more of academics? I have a dot in academics. Yes. Yeah, it turns out you studied it in passing at school. Um, <laughs> cool, so same situation for you then, please. Uh, it's like intelligence, isn't it? Um, I, I think it was perception, perception academics, ah. diff six. Christ, what's going on now? Someone scrabbling up the hill. It's actually a pass from Popajack. Uh, so Tango doesn't quite make it out, I'm afraid. But Popajack, you get a few strangled words as the man throws himself to his feet and shrieks up at you. Wait, what did you do? Something again about Caesar and death. Am I am I muted? What the fuck just happened? Uh, is it as in death to what? Caesar or... Or Caesar is dead. Now, this is where you really wish you'd studied harder in Latin classes at school, because you got the words Caesar and death, and you're clear that it was definitely an aggressive death, but you're not really sure beyond that. There might also have been that sounded like blood. Okay. Um, Can I, uh, in Latin, simple phrase, just say, pull yourself together? Sure. Uh, Roll academics manipulation for me, please. Diff six. Okay. A high stakes Latin translation. Uh, uh, for Benji's benefit, I'm, I'm, I'm doing gonna, this I'm was coming up the hill. That's willpower it. This is oh, all. okay. I'm gonna pump uh, oh. a lot of willpower into this. That's fair. Uh, that's the ah simple fader, unfortunately. Uh, no willpower cannot be cancelled out by botches. Oh, oh, nice. So, successo. Yeah, you you. <laughs> It's a bit halting, but you just about get it out, is... Yourself, stop. Pull together, man. Um, Have you considered being more together? The man stumbles down to... uh, Stumbles, uh, sort of shrinks back down to the floor and starts gently scrabbling up towards you, still muttering in barely audible snippets of Latin. I have a theory... I'm, and I don't think I'm too out here in putting it and saying it, he's going to end up going towards the structure in the centre. And I somewhat suspect he may start digging, or, you know, we should just see what happens. I vote we let him, we don't, we don't molest him anymore, just let him go on his way. See what happens. Now, now, I would like to see what happens, yes, but I'm also worried that um, it's entirely possible that this thing 
is being powered by humans sacrificing themselves to it. We can be close enough by to stop him from sacrificing himself. Besides, I'm sure if this has been going on already, it's already happened plenty of times. Exactly. We can surely learn something through observation. The That's image fair enough. of at the very lip of the hill, Timothy Popajack, one armor, brandishing a pistol, then to his left, presumably eating a sandwich, Woodrow Tango, quietly giving advice, and to his right, quietly eating a different sandwich, Holborn Twight. <coughs> At the bottom of the... Oh, no, sorry. Holborn Twite had his gun out. So Holborn Twite gently clutching a shotgun. Uh, as this... Yeah, rifle. Sorry, rifle. As this man scrabbles up the hill towards you, calmly discussing what to do as the sunset dies behind you, silhouetting the three of you against this, uh, the crimson, bloody horizon. You may... oh, come on, then. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I roll my eyes. I'm up I, the hill. Just come on. I roll my eyes at Timothy. You are directly in his path at the moment, for the record. So. I, I step aside. I, I let him pass. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna give him a, a good deal of room to move. Uh, I shall wait for him inside the structure, <laughs> and I'm going to walk alongside him as he walks to walk, presumably towards it. Okay. Now, Ollie. I will remind you, at least one of these peasants has stabbed someone on contact when they've approached I, I was going to say, I'm going to put away my gun, and I pr- I'm going to put a hold of my wrench and start channeling the wrench jitsu that lives inside of it. Can I just go forward and beat this thing to the ground? <laughs> um, no. We must observe it first. Yes. We are sirs, it's a th- But sirs, it's a threat. No, shut up, you. But sirs, it's a threat. It's not yet a threat. It's a potential threat. Exactly, and we shall leave it alone until the time it does yes, become a threat. But, sirs, yep. as we've seen, uh, as we've seen before, potential threats become real threats very quickly. At that I say exact word, voice. the man crests the hill. I say in my most droll voice, shut up yourself, your masters appear to be telling you something different. Are you sauntering up to the guy now then, Ollie? I was going to, like, not be, like, next to him, but, like, you know, walking somewhat alongside him, maybe, like, a person or two persons distance between. I'm following at a slight distance, I suppose. He swings his head towards you, wild-eyed, blood oozing from his mouth. A little piece of fractured tooth drips away. Lads, um, he appears to have blood in his mouth. I like to think we're all hiding. (laughs) Maybe if you call him brother enough, he'll let you know why. He spits something at you in Latin. Do you have any dots of academics there, Ollie? I do not. I have dots in real life skills instead. Yeah, you went to the school of hard knocks. Did he? (laughs) Big one. Can I hear it? Yeah, you can definitely make out the word (sighs) blood there. The man waits for a heartbeat. Isn't Timothy, like, literally next to him as the... No, Timothy fucked off. Oh, I thought you were something across the No, Tim, like, everyone else I backed away. Aside. I gave him a wide berth. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't reached him yet, so my. No, gun he's reached quite... you. He's reached, like, how He's, like, two he? people's width away from you. Okay, cool. I mean, that's what, like, a meter? Yeah. Yeah, thereabouts. That's easy lunging distance. That is easy uh, lunging. On distance. that subject. <laughs> uh, cool. I mean, I saw the blood, I saw the, the chip tooth fall from it. I presume I can tell the emotional intent behind the Latin word he used. It actually didn't sound aggressive, but he did like spit out blood and tooth seconds before speaking it, and then waited a heartbeat <laughs> and then lunged towards you. So it's I'm going to smack him with my wrench. Cool. Fun fact, um, you can't actually draw fast enough to cause a hit at that distance. It's fine. He's, already not, had shoot, he's not shooting with his gun, and he did say he'd prepped yeah. his wrench already, to be fair. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah. Okay, because I heard him say, put his weapons away. Yeah, he put his gun away and then said he was getting his wrench out. Oh, Because okay. his wrench has served him better, and I guess the gunshot would cra- uh, travel quite far. Um, but can I also claim back a point of willpower for my paranoia proving to be the right course of action here? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um... <laughs> There we go. Now even if Ollie dies, his death has served a noble purpose. 
<laughs> Recouping guess, Carl's uh, willpower. Yeah, that's yeah. ultimately what I was aiming towards here. Like, I just that wanted that point of willpower. Um, cool. I will take Dex melee, please. Ollie, diff six. Sure. Uh, three melee is number two. So five d ten. I'm going to spend a willpower on this as well. Wise. Uh, after this round of smacks, well, I've noticed the commotion. I just want to shout I something think back in Latin. All of you will have noticed the commotion at this point. You're all kind of paying attention to this guy. But, uh, so he did diff six, right? So that's two successes. Yeah. Cool. So you go to whack at him with the wrench. Um, right. Body shot. What's your strength at, Ollie? Uh, four. And I have a specialty of broad shouldered. Uh, yeah, you didn't get any tens, though. Oh, yeah, but you asked me to use dexterity rather than strength anyway. Yes. Yeah, because it wasn't like a close range melee thing. Generally, you use dex for hitting things usually. Yeah. yeah. I suppose you could have broad shoulder as a dex specialty as well. I can see it. Like being able to move loads way above your weight by positioning yourself correctly, that type of thing. But I guess that's not arguably what you do with strength anyway. Anywho. Um, cool. So net two successes then. Uh, plus four from your thing. A body shot and bashing damage. You twat him heavily in the chest, but he keeps coming. Your eyes flash to something in his offhand. A small, sharp, worrisome looking rock. Can I do my Latin shout? Extremely similar to the one you picked up off the moor. Go ahead, Creed. Uh, I want to try and shout in Latin, Hold soldiers, for I have new orders from Caesar himself. <laughs> to try my lunge. Yeah, he's, he's mid-lunge, so I think you might have to tamp that down a bit. <laughs> Stop, Caesar! <laughs> Cease, soldiers! <laughs> Stand down! <laughs> okay, uh, I will take Charisma Academics, please. Diff, diff 8. Oh, what's my charisma? Two. While this is rolling, completely out of character, like I don't know what he was saying. Like I- I'm just going with this place requires many blood sacrifices to resurrect the dude, or something like that. So, uh, using the willpower there, Tango. I see you, <laughs> cowardice, cowardice. <laughs> Net three successes worth of cowardice. <laughs> You shriek out your halting, but relatively grammatically consistent and, more to the point, somewhat correct Latin. Oh, if I could reword it slightly, I'd address them as if they're both soldiers and be like, we're all le- loyal to Caesar here. Let us get new orders. I, get, I think like four or five words or less is the thing for the time sure. frame you're working with. All right, then halt for Caesar's name. It's well phrased. Um, for, for four or five words or less. Okay. Holben Twight, you whack at the oncoming savage villager with your wrench. Your weapon impacts the man's body. You feel a rib bruise, maybe even crack beneath the weight of it. He's sent off kilter, off balance, but he come, uh, continues flashing forwards. Till something shrieks in Latin from the pod behind. Not knowing everyone's there, that's just worrying. <laughs> the man is momentarily off, uh, off-footed, tumbling off to the side and crying back in Latin. Too fast and thickly Yorkshire-accented to be able to understand so much as a word of what he's saying. Classical um, Latin does not do well uh, with a Yorkshire accent. I would like to pin him. I've up, sure. I can't do it. No. <laughs> hey, up. <laughs> Down to grand. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can pin him. Um, strength roll. Yeah. Uh, strength plus anything else? Brawl. Oh, brawl. Uh, 16 to me. success those? I suppose. <laughs> Two successors. As the man tumbles to the side, you throw yourself on top of him, making a point of trying to protect your groin and grab him by knife hand 
uh, as well as the other hand and keep your, your neck out of biting range. What I'm thinking is two hands on either wrist, one leg, well, one knee and leg and lower a sh- shin on the legs, and then one shin maybe like positioned over the neck if possible. So sort of, I'm just trying to pin all major points here, essentially. Yeah, I think you do your best focusing on the knife hand with your with your two successes, but it's it's hardly flawless. Let's see how he resists. Uh, pretty well, actually. That's that's net one more success than you. Uh, as he tosses and bucks and just about manages to throw you off the knife, the sharpened rock going wild in the process careening off to land at the feet of Reginald Foxley Smythe nearby. The man shrieks in mourning and loss. I got a head button. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's at this point somewhat down, so the headbutt kind of catches him out of nowhere. You hear a sickening crunch as his skull impacts off something hard in the rock. Holborn, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Oh, sorry, would you like me to let him at you? Let him get on with what he's meant to be doing. Try to observe him, not kill him. He came at me, and my life... You shouldn't have been in the way, should you? The downed villager (laughs) lies face first in the grass. Momentum gently causes him to fall sluggishly away from the rock where his head impacted the dirt, leaving a thick, oozing bloodstain. Uh, row. I mean, if he's dead, is it, can I feel a pulse? I have one dot in medicine, so. Yeah, perception medicine, diff five. It, I believe Carl's rut row was less about is he dead and more I, about I know, what, you, I know. what you've done. You, uh, can, four dots in- you can feel a pulse, <laughs> but uh, it definitely looks like a nasty head wound on him there. That could be nothing. It could be a minor concussion, or he could be already on the way out. I mean, head wounds always bleed a fuck ton anyway. I use one of my band, one of my oily rags that I seem to have on me, and um, I just try and bandage it as best I can, or rip some of his clothing off. Whatever. I would like, with my three dots in medicine, to shout at you: "Don't do that, you stupid bastard!" <laughs> What? Don't don't bandage the bleeding man. Don't I mean, put the oily rags I in know, the bloody I know, wound. I know, I know, I know. You uncultured uh, goit. Wow! If you had worked on the front lines like I had, you'd know the things you have to use in the heat of war. Um. Okay, can I roll etiquette to be polite about this? <laughs> what are you What are you wanting to be polite about specifically? <laughs> about the fact that I'm going to really shit talk his military record because he's a mechanic. He was in the tank corps. He was not on the front lines. We were in the trenches. We knew what the front lines. He was ten miles behind in a nice warm hut. I can't imagine tanks were very good if you were ten miles behind. <laughs> like you don't keep them, well them on the front line minutes. when you're repairing them. <laughs> Um, uh, I would say with your dots in etiquette, you can certainly have a go at him over that, but you would know that that would be most undecorous. If nothing else, the Royal uh, Tank Regiment is is somewhat illustrious. Bitch, I was in the Gloucesters. Y- yeah, still the Royal Tank Regiment. No, not like, like, the Gloucesters at this point is so much better than the Tank Regiment. <laughs> That sounds exactly. Wait, were like you one. in the Gloucesters anyway? I thought you were. Only... That was yeah. We we all went through and picked it. I said I was in the Gloucesters, but you would have still been a, an officer's Batman, presumably. Well, yeah, I but will be back I... in five minutes. I just need to grab something. It's the, the Royal Tank Corps had been founded like two years into the war. Yeah, the Gloucesters have been fighting since the War of Spanish Spanish Succession. They are not the same. It is. It is the Royal Tank Regiment. <laughs> Sir, uh, it would be unseemly to uh, um, Johnny come lately in metal boxes. <laughs> don't you dare bring metal boxes into this. No, no metal boxes. This is not 40k. I mean, what let's saying, be honest. Like, what I'm saying is, if you're in the Royal Tank Regiment, it is not the same as being in the tr- in the trenches. And we would know that. Be all. I think everyone is a veteran apart from Creed. Uh, I was torn at whether or not I dodged the draft or I served discreetly. <laughs> yeah, but I know, Carl, you were definitely in the trenches. Uh, yeah, I mean, Young like, Nicholas the was rear trenches. 
Oh, okay, well, Tango. I know young Nicholas is definitely in him, and I was definitely in him. Tango, like, I know he didn't take... Oh, he did take Drive, so maybe ah. that would apply. But Tango kind of gives me, like, first-generation Royal Air Force um, vibes, honestly. He does a bit, yeah. Oh, I'm going for that. Those magnificent men and their flying machines. <laughs> He's the greatest pilot this side of Calais, don't you know? <laughs> I mean, I'd say it's uh, not necessarily on point here, but um, I do love the meme that the American Air Force is more like a corporation than a military wing. I've never heard bloody that. Ameri- bloody Americans. It basically is. It's, lo- it's Lockheed Martin as a military wing, really. That's all it is. Fair. I, I don't know modern military history particularly well. So, what are we doing then? Um, the man- Running over to give the man proper he... medical attention. Yeah, it doesn't take too much to work out that something, uh, some of the bones being pushed into his skull. Um, he's not technically dead right now, but he's going to be dead pretty shortly. Oh, he right. Can I roll a cult? Uh, can I roll intelligence a cult? Because I have a speciality in vampire hunting. Hmm. Uh, Can I roll that to know if this is a really bad idea? Uh, or, is that, or is that meta? No, I mean, it's your speciality, right? So I think blood's somewhat valid as a thing to make you suspicious in a place you suspect to be quite suspicious. Um, I suspect this place may be suspicious, you know, or it may be completely ordinary. Well, people are, screaming, people are screaming in Latin about various things. Screaming in Latin is very rarely a good sign. That's true. Um, Cool. I will take... Yeah, we'll call it Intelligence Occult. Diff 8. Now it's blood. Diff 6. Aha! That is, in fact, three degrees of success. I'm only counting two. (laughs) I get a ten for my speciality. Oh, yeah, sorry. You get a speciality. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely dumb. Yes, it is three. Three successes. Uh, You would feel confident um, that it's it, it's probably fine. Like, the blood would need to go into a vampire of some kind in order to, to give it power, and they usually need to drink quite a lot. Plus, at least in this time frame, and for the most popular vampire memes you're aware of, evening like this seems to be uh, an unlikely time to see a vampire. You would expect more to see them um, in your limited professional capacity, potentially much deeper into the night and in the like common parlance of the time they prefer late afternoon uh, bastards right still this is right this is suspicious as fuck well certainly he babbled in latin fought back well i suppose defending himself as expected but either way he was wandering the mountain alone Varney, sorry, Varney the Vampire is the most famous vampire other than Dracula. Sorry, for Varney the Vampire. Varney the Vampire is the like most widely serialized vampire in history and is the origin of a lot of common modern-day vampire memes. And Varney the Vampire could absolutely go out in sunlight. Um, so yeah, I'm all- just thinking of the purple dinosaur, I'm sorry. No, yeah. V with a... Uh, Varney yeah, with a v. I know, but yeah. I... But, um, but yeah, for, for all of your popular conceptions of what a vampire is, they they can absolutely be out and about in the day, as far as you're aware. Dracula can't, can he? Uh, I don't know if Dracula can or can't. I don't remember. It's been ages since I've read I don't think book, he can, but, what I'm, what I'm but equally is, a lot of other weaknesses don't... A lot of other stuff doesn't work on him, like Crucifix and Dracula. Carlo. Dracula's also much earlier. Um, Varney the Vampire is, <laughs> would be the thing that, for a lot of you, was the like cultural touchstone. Um, it's the major vampire in like British cultural history from just before our period. So it's like about when all of you would have been kids or growing up. Like old Varney books would have been your experience. Well, don't suppose anyone fancies digging up inside that structure for the gentleman? I look to Reginald. <laughs> the blood rolls gently down the hill. Moving towards the center of the bowl. Eaten. There's a blood trail moving to the center of the bowl. It seems to be just pulsing out of the guy's head. But it's not actually a line, like, worming its way towards it. Not literally worming, no. It looks a fairly natural flow. 
No, I'll put my foot in front of the flow regardless and see what it does. Well, sirs, that's rather ominous, isn't it? Begin seeping into your shoe. Oh, dear. (laughs) Hmm. Now, I know this might be a bit of a uh, rash choice, but what if we were to chuck the bloodied corpse into the structure and see what happens? I think, sir, that's a terrible idea. No, I, I think that's a face. fantastic idea. <laughs> I face my wheelchair to point downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Arrange yourself at the lip. <clears throat> Don't worry, gentlemen. Just keeping watch. Indeed, sir. Let me attend to you. Of course, of course. I will, like, discreetly step into the structure. And will I have something to cut my hand with? Um, oh, yeah, I'd George. say you probably have a knife on you. Do oh, I just good call power back because everyone else thought <laughs> a weird thing for me to go and trust that guy. So it's a bit of an enigma to them. Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't say yeah, really for me, like, because, uh, like I say, in character at least, I would personally portray that to you being some stupid peasant. Um, is, is the guy unconscious now? He's dead. Or, oh, well, dying. Oh, yeah. He's dying. Okay, cool. I'm just checking. Functionally so eliminated. Out. Yeah. Okay. Has Perfect. he dropped just... a sharp rock? Yes, it yeah. went flying over toward Benji's feet a while ago, though he's moved about since. Uh, yeah. Whenever someone is perplexed by actions that you take that later turn out to be a fruitful endeavor. I'm oh. not. So you would need, you can't just confuse people, you would need to confuse people, and then also that networks out well for you. In some way, uh, I'm going to cut my palm inside the structure and squeeze a drop of blood onto the soil with my magnet stick out, following the blood as it drops and seeing if any readings change. It's difficult to see in the increasing gloom, especially inside the structure, but the blood seems to <laughs> fade into the wet earth all too quickly. Perhaps it's simply yeah. dry. Perhaps not. Your Magnetron is, honestly, at this point, uh, going just a little bit nuts, somewhat close to overloading. The magnetic fluid swelling through the groundwater nearby, uh, really doing a number on it. Anga, what are you doing in there? Science! (laughs) Science! I shout from within. Inconclusive science. Ah, well, <laughs> are we going to throw the body in there or not? The blood trail has about reached the centre of the room. It begins yeah. to pool very gradually, slowly uh, revealing a natural dip, imperceptible to the human uh, eye, in the very centre like of the chamber. To cup my hands through the dirt beneath it to try and lift the seeping blood and then chuck it off the mountain. Why you like this creed? Sides! <laughs> Everyone else sees you come out with like two cupped hands filled with this man's warm, steaming blood. The early midwinter air. You rush up to the lip of the hill and cast it off the side. Fascinating. <laughs> Your hand and chew covered in blood. Benji, I don't think that's very decorous behaviour, to you, uh, do you? Not at all. That'll, this that'll is be utterly unbecoming. A, your, <laughs> oh what, what is, do you have a physical tell when your floor kicks in? I think this is a plus three difficulty on your next roll, right? Yeah, so. I think it's my eyes are going to twitch. <laughs> twitch gently. Yeah. Gently but furiously. Like someone sped you up, uh, j- sped up just your face specifically to like one point five speed. Basically, yeah. Are you next- okay? <laughs> For my next trick, I'm going to hold my bloodied hands uh, like a couple centimeters off from the ground, but like facing upwards, and see if the blood curls around, and drops in. The droplets begin rolling, rolling without being absorbed into the ground, down towards the bowl in the very centre, at the base of the structure. In its I would like to have been, like, walked over to see what you know is happening at this point, and be fascinated by the apparent anti-gravity droplets. No, they're, they're conforming with gravity. They're just not being sucked into the earth. 
Oh, the way oh, he's gravity, he's trying to get blood on top of his hands and he's holding it over the earth and he wants to see if the blood was attracted oh, to the Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you had your hands pointed upwards, did you say, Creed? Oh, yeah, I did say. Oh, so. sorry. Um, yeah, in that case, it's it's not pulled out particularly. The blood pools on your hands. But as soon as it falls off, hits the bowl, and starts sliding downwards towards the structure. Yeah. Hmm. Is this is based on structure? This is uh, following gravity, or it certainly looks like it's following gravity. But this is England. You're all experienced with the rain, and this is very odd liquid behaviour. You wouldn't expect it to retain this much momentum. The slope does not look this dramatic. The uh, fact that none of it's simply absorbed into the ground. I like to think. A, uh, a flash of scientific understanding between myself and Tango uh, appears between each other's eyes um, as I psychically and inter- silently suggest we should let it happen. We should just let the blood absorb and see what happens. Mm. What I'm curious of, gentlemen, is whether or not this has happened before since. And if so, what happened to any carcasses produced? Maybe blood- if we throw... Go on, sorry. And say, if the blood seems somewhat attracted to this place, even slightly, and people have been offering it, then I would expect some cadavers or more remains at least. Maybe if we played, place the uh, the cadaver onto the pool and we can see what happens. It seems to be attracted to that spot. I'm and sure I'm assuming again. that's where the body would end up normally. Though equally, I'm curious what would happen if we were to attempt to excavate the beneath of this structure. How about we excavate first? Though I don't believe we have any digging. Well, you if not. we put the cadaver at said spot, something might unveil itself. And if it doesn't and it does disappear, we can then follow it and excavate afterwards. Well, I don't think we have any digging gear on us apart from our hands. That is the case, yes. I'm so, sure you can come up with something. You're an engineer. I'm sorry, but our entire party can be summed up in this one image. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> I mean... I would like to no say that that's exactly... I, I mean, I have backed off and left it alone. Yep, and like, yep you two have. You're stood at the lip of the uh, the bowl atop white mountain, everybody else. wheelchair oh. pointing down, ready that, to hightail it out of there. I, I'd mostly think I'd have it myself, but you see, I've only got one hand free. I'm sure you could help me. Also, can uh, I as got the... a curiosity will mm-hmm. power yet? Or... Yeah, I think yeah. this probably counts for curiosity, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Did you do all this for a while? God damn it. Um, I'm always playing curious. <laughs> yeah, that is fair. Uh, as the three of them are discussing... Sebastian and uh, Reginald, you know, you've, you've just been kind of facing them in increasing disbelief and concern, especially after Reginald already talked you all down from excavating once. You're not sure which one of you snaps their head to look back down the hill first. But the slight stiffening and tension in the air that comes from it causes the other one to look back in almost the same instant. You can see stretching back across the moors from Tutley Without Wold. A figure? Two? Three? Five? Some staggering. One crawling. One aimlessly zigzagging. All of them gently but firmly making their way towards White Mountain. The end of the campaign is going to be... So, we told the hat people... That, uh, you know, didn't need to worry about anyone not being able to leave anymore. There was no one left to leave, but we, we, we skip over that part. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, sir. We should get out of here. Now, we're meant to be saving everyone, or we're trying to make it look as non-suspicious as possible. If the entire town dies, that's pretty suspicious. Uh, all we're trying to determine is simply what the phenomena is and if it can be of use to us, if I recall correctly. <laughs> I don't remember I any requirements on the health of the local populace. No, no, there isn't. But it was 
I believe, to arouse as little suspicion as possible. And if an entire town goes missing, it's pretty suspicious. I suppose you have me there. Like also human beings. Our own flesh and blood, though, you may be very distantly related to them. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait just one moment. Oh, wait, I'm not, like, you're in the building. Fuck. Can I, I even will, hear this? I think from that, because they, they're all acting like they knew, so it sounds like at the stiffening uh, from atop the lip and the uh, Jesus Christ comment, the three of them came up and saw the figures with you. So you can assume that the rest, uh, you're all united at the lip of the bowl again. Okay, then. Um, wait just one moment. Weren't you the one that clocked the poor fellow? Weren't you the one that just wanted to wait and see what happened first? And now you're talking as if you have some moral high ground? Well, also, I'm what should we do about the these fellows? But he lunged at me first. And seeing what I, seeing what happened is, you know, best I could do at the time. I, it, 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 it did not one interfere. One of the figures has almost reached the base of the hill. Hmm. Can I try and address them in Latin as they approach? Much I assume to the dismay of the party. I, I, <laughs> I, I, just before you do that, I'm going to suggest that perhaps we wait on the opposite lip and just maybe see what happens again. <laughs> we clearly can't stop them from coming up here, and as I've as we've seen, attempting to interact with them makes them violent. At least for the one I've seen, in, like ah, history. but they have shown at least some reaction to Latin. True, true. I, maybe it's worth a try, but maybe uh, this is something best left alone until tomorrow. Maybe. You'd have to really yell for the person to hear you at the foot of the hill. The sound will carry, the words may not. <laughs> well, I'm, I shall posit it to the party what we shall do. For it is uh, my desire that I wait till they're closer here, Scott, shout at them in Latin, and see if we can get further responses. Granted, I have no plan from there onwards. And I think we should wait on the opposite rim, below their eyesight, and peek over to see what they end up doing. It might give us further insight to this place. <laughs> Valuable insight. So there's five or ten, did you say? Seven at last count, though since you've been talking, an eighth has joined in the distance. Like, out of character, like, I mean, just holy fuck, guys. Like, my excuse is, I'm in a wheelchair. Why aren't you fuckers doing anything about this? What do you, what do you want, me, want me to do? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kill them, or, or or try to knock them all out, or try to shout at them to go away, or let them do their thing and see what happens. My current assumption is that this has already been happening for some time. Hmm. And that they're not necessarily coming here because of us. Yes. In any case, oh, no, no. we should hide the body. Go on, but again, like purely out of character at this point. I mean, like because I have no idea that like Matey's been babbling about blood and the blood got absorbed in like the tomb area, or that the blood was pulsing out and flowing to the tomb area. And even if it has been going on for a long time before we got here, that's worse because it means it's closer <laughs> for whatever ritual to be completed. <laughs> and because we are here and we are being like impacted by whatever is keeping people here that means that we could either succumb to whatever this calling is or again like be at the sharp end of the stick when it does get completed I mean what are the chances this is the last time it's going to happen and this will complete it do you want to find out although no? still I posit what are our options other than confrontation or hiding uh, solve it before they get here. Or before they all get here. Or who get here? The eight of them that are walking. Nine. Nine. <laughs> oh lord, there's more. Um, I've been talking out of character, I didn't think time was still moving. Uh, everyone else been <laughs> kind of posting in character. Plus, when you oh. all, like waffle for things to do, I just let time run in the game. I'm, there is a pause button, but I'm stingy with it. I'm going to start dragging the dead body over to the uh, opposite side of the rim. I don't think they're going to care about the body. They don't seem in their right mind anyway. Well, we probably shouldn't test their theory. And I ask if, and, and I'm there like, will anyone help me drag it? I, I don't want to find out if your theory, uh, if your theory is, is any, it comes true, has any truth in it or not, Timothy. I'm sorry. All right. 
I was about to ask, who's Siri you talking about what now? <laughs> but then you said Timothy. What was, I say? What, what was my uh, theory again? What, that they will or won't, they, that they might not notice it. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> but in any case, I start dragging the body over to the opposite side of the rim, and I'm going to take out my, my binoculars when I get there and see if I see anyone approaching from that side. I don't think I will, but, you know. Perception awareness, please, Ollie. Diff seven. Sure thing. Uh, do not make it. Yeah, you almost fancy you can see some distant activity, some movement off near Catclock Point, but you can't make out anything. It could very easily be the mists starting to sweep in from the south, soon to blanket the entire area in an almost impenetrable fog. You do, uh, however, I... manage to haul the body over there. Cool. I position it so that it doesn't roll down. It's just sort of other end of the lip. Yeah, gently slopes. Okay. What are the other four doing? Might I suggest a compromise of our current suggested ideas, in that we wait over the other side of the ridge, see what happens, and then maybe I address them in Latin, depending on the situation? That works for me. Yes. <laughs> so with that... Sounds like the rest of you also retire to the opposite lip, the other rim. What other edge of the rim? <clears throat> like, in a monologue, I do not feel comfortable being so close to these... As you uh, just about position yourselves, the first oncoming petitioner-like figure crests the rise. She looks haggard, Forlorn, hair all but torn from her scalp, a single eye, bruised and bloody where it's been impacted by something. Clutched in one hand is something glinting softly in the rising moonlight. She staggers down the hill towards the structure. When she's about halfway down, she cries out something in Latin. I will take Academics Perception, Diff 5, from anyone who'd like to hear that. You need at least one dot in Academics. Diff 5. Yeah. Two successes. And one apiece from the other two, I believe. <laughs> it's a pretty simple, uh, simple phrase. Literally translated would simply be my life is yours. Of course, that's something like uh, Vita tua est. Oh no, that's your life is. God damn it, Google, why you suck so much heart? <clears throat> and with that, the woman jams what she's holding deep into her neck, opening the artery, spraying gore in a vast red flood out, pulsing, pulsing down the hill towards the structure. She topples. The blood rolls seeping down towards the sinister inner bowl. Jesus Christ, sir. Yes, does seem a bit... Uh, right. Sir Thornbury, wh what do we do? Should we be taking courage rolls for this as well? I would usually say yes. I think all of you went through the war. Um, that will have somewhat inured you to this. Not in a good way, in a like somewhat, but like you're probably not even dealing a little, with simply, not even a little one. <laughs> well, I mean, Popa Jack saw almost everyone else in his regiment get you know mulched alongside him, and is incredibly blasé about it. Um, yourself, you serve with the Gloucesters. That will not have been convenient. Woodrow Tango was in the Air Force for that lovely period where they refused to issue parachutes because they said it would make people bail out of planes before they absolutely had to. And, you know, therefore one of the leading causes of death for pilots was to be burnt to death in their own flying planes. Um, yeah, those the, men in their magnificent flying machines are also 
flying coffins. Yeah, absolute death traps. So <laughs> the the only one really is uh, Sebastian, also Lieutenant. I'm not sure what regiment we said, but, you know, the only one maybe would be Holborn Twight. And no. I, I'd oh, be inclined what? to say that, yeah, mechanic doesn't mean that his entire experience has been, um, like, roses. If nothing yeah, else, the, they would have had the way to... I... Where? Well, the way I've got it in my head is, is one, you know, he would have absolutely been fighting alongside them at some point or another, walking with them. Also, probably getting mulched bodies out of the treads. Yeah, know, it would be my thinking. Say, yeah. Like, maintenance. And also, not like... How? That's not what... You... Uh, yeah, actually, no, I was thinking the same. I'm so annoyed. Job in the RAF is <laughs> taking corpses out of old planes to fix them. So um, they bring in a wreckage, it's got bodies in, you've got to pull them out clean it all up. Plus you'd assume analysis of, of destroyed tanks as well, right? Um, mm-hmm. In the same way that you analyse a car wreck to figure out what's gone wrong. You would have thought that. Yeah, that would but have been. You, you don't have the mechanics anywhere near the front lines because they're valuable. No, I, so, I, I, I don't think he's saying... The body's out. I, yeah, I don't think he's saying that he literally was like there in the bayonet charges, but he's he's been through his share of grisly hell, basically, and maybe being caught up in an unfortunate action where he was supposed to be further behind the lines than he was when the Germans broke through. I don't know World War One enough to give an example, um, and I can't think there have been many, but the, it was not without its big breakthroughs. They weren't common, but when they happened, they were pretty dramatic precisely because. Um, point being, generally fair, in this instance, you've all been through hell. You're all already, to some degree, going to be suffering from forms of crippling PTSD, probably. Uh, or you're just, you know, deranged sociopaths like Popajack, um, which is its own, <laughs> its own mental health problem. <laughs> um, but I would also like to kind of highlight that, mm-hmm. well, this isn't contesting what you're going with, quite frankly, but it benefits us, so I like, really don't want to go there. But, like, there's something different with, like, I say, the carnage of war versus seeing someone sacrificially commit suicide for something. That is very true. Like I say, I'm not trying to contest you, please. Like, I mean, don't take it as like, I'm just saying like the mental impact, like, you, you, you know, yeah, no, it definitely, it definitely. Flavor. Have, it, I'm not saying it would have hit hard. Um, I'm not going to call for a courage roll on it just because again, world war one, you'll, you'll have gone through some shit. Like I say, it's just the flavour and the way we take it is what I'm getting at. Exactly. I think it hits different, but not different enough. Thank you. Ollie summed it up very succinctly. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's like everyone, I say everyone, like lactose intolerant people, like don't like it. My point being is like, who doesn't like vanilla ice cream? Who doesn't like, I mean, you know. Right, that's where you're going with that. I was going to say, I, I don't think we've established if any party members are lactose intolerant, and even if they were, I don't think I'd call for them specifically to make courage rolls. I mean, to be fair, I did know a guy that was allergic to nuts, and occasionally he'd like fucking just be like, you know what, I love peanut butter, I'm going to eat peanut butter, bam, EpiPen, right, call an ambulance. <laughs> I mean, if you can afford it. So... What are we doing, folks? Watching. I turn to Woodrow. I don't think it's a good idea for you to shout at them in Latin. Well, they're only killing themselves. For the love of all that is good, perhaps we (laughs) should be the one killing them before they can complete whatever damned ritual this may be. Well, feel free to hop to at any time. (laughs) Ha ha, hop to at any more wheelchair jokes. (laughs) I know you can walk. (laughs) Like head slowly <laughs> turning. You, do you, you think? Sorry. I was like, do you think that there's a difference between me walking and a baby crawling at this juncture? He, he, he was Sir Sebastian earlier today. On the record, call- within the last yes. twelve hours. <laughs> uh, Sir Sebastian, if you wouldn't mind calling drill, I shall forthwith eliminate them. Um, I would just like to, you know, the nod. Wait, 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 just a moment before we start this. Might I suggest that shedding their blood will not help us in the slightest? Yeah, it's a good not here. I, I hate to do this to one I consider to be a gentleman most of the time, but quite frankly, sir, were you not sacrificing your own blood and offering it to the ground mere moments ago? Shock. Horror. Oh, oh my God. Greatly. All you know is I shouted science when you inquired. <laughs> I, I think it's I suggest that considering the blood already spilt by that woman over there, 
It's already happening. Uh, That's it, Sir yeah, Sebastian. If you wouldn't mind calling Drill, I shall forthwith eliminate them. Drill! What's your I, plan here, Benji? I don't think all eight are at the top. Uh, I'm going to break out the shotgun that I've got. The or rather, it's a it's a fouling piece, basically. It's a, technically it's a shotgun, but it's a fouling piece mostly. Yeah, that'll mess up a, a human. Yep, yep. I'm a I'm a going to start laying down some fire. This is why I'm asking the army officers to call drill. Nah. Makes me feel like I'm alive again. Arms? Where are you shooting exactly. from? Well, I'm going to go up to the lip and just blow away anyone approaching it. Okay, so the other lip. Right. Okay. Cool. You uh, you may unfortunately recall you are somewhat unsettled from <laughs> your recent experiences watching extremely ungentlemanly behaviour. So that'll be I am, indeed. Diff 6 oh, plus yeah. 3 for a net of diff 9. I'm shaking. Did you bring up the shotgun? Do I turn it on my superior officer, or do no. I shoot the civilians? That'll, we'll call it Dex Firearms. It'll it'll be one roll for the over thing, rather than per. Then Moreover, merely just killing him. Like, isn't the necessary not just location, but intention with the Indeed. notion of sacrifice? Indeed, I sir. See. And we're back! Very well, then! Open fire! <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> Cool. What was the net successes there, Benji? I haven't rolled yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah, none of us have. Fair. Sorry. I, I thought the original Foxy Spider roll there was your one, but no, uh, reasonable. No. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what I, happened I, there. That is a willpower spent as well, so that is oh. two successes. Uh, Fuck you, one. Um, it's only yeah, one success. This is just a standard shoot. I spent willpower. Yeah, he spent a willpower, but he got a nine and a one, and it's six uh, difficulty six plus three for difficulty nine. So the one cancels out the nine. Oh uh, yeah, a one. So uh, net of one success. Damn you, ones. Um, yeah, what's uh, diff for standard shooting? Six, right? Uh, six, six for center mass at reasonable range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm leveling my shotgun. Naturally, it's ten if you want to use a shotgun in melee, but uh, that's just how <laughs> that goes. No, just. Just stop that. <laughs> yeah. like. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cool, so I only had Reginald Foxy smile up at the gun line. It sounded like other people wanted to go up there whilst I was having my technical difficulties. Oh yeah, pretty much all of us other than Holpen. <laughs> he's talking uh, Unless, I, Ollie, you do want to join in the shoot? Oh, uh, yeah, he's kind of there uh, like, uh, well, if it's the course of action we're taking, I don't it's, enjoy uh, firing on civilians. Popo Jack isn't firing. He's actually uh, keeping everyone in rhythm uh, with the ready, aim, fire! I mean, surely you'd be like a drummer firing, like, exactly. first. He, he's doing the, the officer thing of just keeping everyone in order and making You're sure... You're calling drill. I'm calling drill, yeah. Uh, I'll have my pistol out, but I'm going to hold fire till people are real close and go for aimed shots to the head. Well, I think the only one of you with, um... What's it called? Uh... Brain. The only one, we, uh, the only one of you with a gun that's designed for any kind of moderate range to it is the one with the rifle. Everyone else is using pistols or shotguns, which, you know, to be fair, they go further than they do in games, but they're, they're still, uh, even then, it depends on whether you're using buckshot or not, I guess, which I think you were. Why wouldn't oh, we for be? quick context, what is the rough <coughs> diameter of this bowl and structure? Um, I've not really given it one. We'll call it somewhere between 10 and 20 meters, but that will shrink or grow as required. Ah, okay, yeah. I mean, shotgun for whatever reason, cover. I was imagining like a barely portaloo sized structure inside a small bowl. Yeah, it's just maybe just a little bit larger than a portaloo. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So got some bright plugs there. God damn it! With uh... <sighs> sorry, I was just I'm, I'm actually glad you don't use Facebook much, Carl. People keep messaging Joe with things to harass me with. And wait, wait, wait. The amount of side chats I have with me, partner, and friend embarrassing me. Isn't that right, Benji? We discuss pretty much just orcs and minis in that yeah, chat. Yeah, of course you do. We, we do! Anywho, point being, with the five of you there, you're able to begin taking pot shots. Not even pot shots, actually. Taking uh, steadily aimed shots. They're not coming in waves, but the stream out from Tutley without bold does begin to grow. Ten becomes twenty, 
20 becomes 40, 40 becomes somewhere north of 70, and at about that point you lost track. I'm going to stop firing. It grinds on, only very slowly starting to come to a slight trickling halt just after midnight. Ammunition is running low on all fronts. The limited uh, provisions you brought with you intended to maybe hopefully give you a fighting chance against that beast from the forest, but here spent on gunning down human life after human life. The moon hangs high in the sky overhead. The moor all around you is quiet and dark, misty. You can see no more shambling humans coming from Tutley without hold. Uh, Tutley without hold? Tutley without hold. How's the blood situation? You kept them off the top of the uh, the top of White Mountain and its bowl. So the only blood up here are the uh, is the corpse of the woman who uh, killed herself here, and then what blood poured out of the guy who was okay. accidentally brained earlier. And we haven't witnessed any attraction of blood outside the bowl proper. No. Okay. We can't yeah, blood right. away from the side. Not a good time. Yeah, yeah I thought it was attractive from over, so this is better news. Uh, end of the night, looking up at the moon, uh, kind of uh, gallows humour, just I guess that's what they call a bloody moon. Oh dear. It's, uh, <laughs> Look for at the him. record, only about it's halfway tough. through the night. Fair enough. Well, halfway through the night, then. Yeah, it's just the, they, call the, the, they call a blood moon. The flow has stopped. I would like to light up a cigarette, take one puff on it, and then hand it across to Sebastian. Or Sir Sebastian. I light my pipe. I, I plant my pipe and light that as well. Is Sebastian a sir? I think that's just what I'm calling him in sort of... <laughs> I will serve a gentleman. I will serve a gentleman. <laughs> ah, I deny. I will okay. bluff. You How take long it. is that negative for? Uh, just that role, but he's role playing it. It ah. it really got to him with uh, the one success. It burned through a lot of your ammo and a lot of the shots, especially from uh, Reginald, were messier than they had to be. A number of the corpses have rolled to the very bottom of the hill, lying in higgledy piggledy heaps. <coughs> <coughs> the night is cold and stiff. The only sound now. Breaking the silence. The cigarette being passed up and down the line. <laughs> uh, <coughs> once it's been finished. Uh, well, gentlemen, I suppose we should uh, dispose of the evidence. How do you evidence, suggest yeah. we dispose of 75 corpses? I'll, well, but I'll show you. Ah, I see. <laughs> In the very distance, there's a long... Low, mournful howl. And that a good place to leave it for the week. Eep. Fuck you, cliffhangers. What is your perhaps going to be? I was going to say, perhaps we should come back in the morning. Just have to make it back to the town. Does anyone have any reminders for next session? Anything they want noted down? It's hollow underneath the box. In the center of the bowl. Box. Potentially. Oh, oh the, the boxy structure, right, yes. Uh, anything else? Mournful yeah. hell from the distance. Nope. Uh, potential activity seen over at Cat Clock Point. Fair, fair. Um, now, this is a tinfoil, tinfoil hat reminder. It's, uh, Werewolf may be aware of magnetic, magnetic, mag, mag, magnetic influence. If it makes you feel any better, I just typed werewaffle. <laughs> the werewaffle may be aware of magnetic influence. Yes. Stash trying to keep people away from the village. Fair, fair. Anything else? No, I think it's. To you? We're almost out of ammo. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. 
here functionally entirely out. We'll say everyone's down to basically their last, the last bullet they've got, bullet or round. Was I using mine off. if I was just? Oh yeah, out sorry. Aside from Pope, no, actually, you got up to seventy-five. Even even you by the end were having to take shots at people. You did not have the ammo to spare. Okay. There is more back at the car. And hey, it's one of the periods in history where I think you can actually have a clip in use at this point. An honest-to-God's clip and not a magazine that people yep. are mislabeling. And I fully didn't realise it was 1020 already. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what are we talking about? Oh, reminders. <laughs> it's, 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 it's gone on fast this week. Any other reminders for next session? Nope. I have 25 dead. 75 dead, right. Yeah, I was going to say, he bringing the casualty statistics down a bit there. Yeah, lots of corpses around mountain. Yes. Oh, can you put on determine where corpses go? Or something to that effect. Cool, cool. Okay. Feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time. More sandwich eating. Yeah, you you could eat the sandwiches perfectly well yourselves, and you did. Yep, that, that's that's it's something I enjoyed. I see, I see. <laughs> Fair. Any other feedback? Yeah. Cool. Uh, in that case, I guess a, a note from me. I think we picked up a little, a little bit more after the midpoint in the session, but definitely at the start, like, don't feel too bad about. Um, just calling pushing pace. forwards with plot things. Yeah, well, definitely not calling pace. I thought that was great from everyone because we got into a number of discussions and almost all of them got nipped in the bud really early. Um, but I, I think because uh, Benji and Carl have been our drivers so far this campaign um, and Benji had baby things happening, especially early on in the night, and Carl's character has just been stabbed in the chest this morning <laughs> and is in a bit of a like paranoid state of suspense as a result. Um so they weren't doing quite so much of their usual like leadershipy things. Um, and for everyone else, I'd say don't worry too much about just doing your own thing in a way that drives the plot forward. Um, yeah, but that definitely got better towards the end of the session. But uh, I suppose just a just a reminder that anyone can step in and be star of the show at any moment, especially you, Wally. I, I already really, am anyway. I you I was really mean to you last week, and I feel bad about it. Yeah, remember um, to no, I was just listening back to like sessions from from last time, and and the the Ollie jokes were a little bit they were a little bit more than usual. Just thinking, oh, that's 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 bad. I like Ollie. I shouldn't yeah. be so mean to him so constantly. Plus, I am seeing you next week, and I will have ample, presumable opportunity to get my own back. Is the thing. Uh, yeah, that's true. You know, separating. Um, see, rather cool. Uh, questions? Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Anyone have any theories on what's happening? I do. Um, someone over at Cat Clock Point is organ is orchestrating all of this. <laughs> there, I have um, a theory on what's happening. I, I, as someone who's carrying an item proving that we have canonically linked this world to Elder Scrolls continuity, I'd be very wary of suggesting someone at Cat Clock Point is coordinating things, Ollie. Dun, dun, dun. Um. I, I I theorize there's something uh something needs a massive amount of blood sacrifice at the top of there to come back through from the other side. Uh and I reckon the werewolf is feeling something. I I I'm going off the notion that werewolves are all about nature and balance and whatnot, is that right? That's that's metagaming, I'm afraid. Uh no no no. I uh, oh, I thought you. I thought you're talking about meta wise. Oh, fair. Sorry, if you're if you're talking about meta theories, then yes, yeah, that is yeah. that is how they operate in what generally. Yeah. 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 So I I I, I, I theorize, theorize, theorize that uh, the werewolf knows that something dodgy is going on over here. Is trying to actually stop people coming down that road. Hence why it chased us and tried to kill us hmm. uh, to stop us going to town and being another sacrifice. And it doesn't want to be inside the magnetic area because it's not natural. And it can feel the influence. 
My theory is either an ancient Roman super vampire has found a convenient way to feed, or all the souls of a lost battle have formed into a mega ghost. Desires more power. <laughs> I mean, My that is 100% mechanically possible in Wraith, for the record. Sorry, carry on. And would be about as oh. terrifying as you're imagining as well. Uh, sorry, Ollie? My theory is that Ghost Caesar, or uh, re- like some sort of high up commando, Ghost Caesar has some, risen somewhat, and uh, it's not intentional, but there's some sort of psychic malaise happening, which is causing, uh, you know, maybe like there's a regiment of dead Roman soldiers here as well, and something's activated it, and it's causing a malaise to appear over the town folks to make them emulate said dead soldiers. Uh, doesn't quite explain the blood sacrificing. But yeah, I don't know. It's fair. Or maybe Joe Caesar just wants people to kill himself in his name. Maybe he's doing that. It's uh, some interesting, interesting stuff all around from everyone. Thank you. And obviously, Benji doesn't get to have a theory because he wrote the campaign spec. And by tweaks aside, he knows what the plot is. Uh, I have theories. I can have theories. You. <laughs> I mean, I could have, I could have completely rejigged everything. It would be a bait and switch if, like, yeah. My theory yeah. is that it's all Prometheans. This is this is now a giant's the Perfidious campaign. Um, We're start. playing Genius the Transgression crossed with Highlander the Reckoning. Is it Highlander the Reckoning? Or? You're mixing Old World of Darkness, um, what's it called, homebrews, and New World of Darkness homebrews now. I'm aware. <laughs> you can't stop me. That's true. I can't. Um, Cool, well, thank you all for some interesting theories. Let's do some XP. Uh, thank you, Ollie. Plot progression. Does anyone feel like you made a significant plot progression in this session? And if so, what? Mm, I don't know. If maybe I thinking of people. Blood, blood sacrifice? We found out that was happening? There might be people at cat clock point, maybe, on a failed awareness roll, but not a bot discovered awareness. that there's something definitely going down on White Mountain. I think that probably falls under the discovered the blood sacrifice thing. Sorry, I didn't know if you counted that. Fair. Um, I'm going to say no on cat clock point, because you don't really have any like ideas, and it was a failed roll. Fair. Anything else? Um, blood being absorbed into the soil? Uh, only at one very specific spot. Exactly. Well, we discovered that it was happening at White Mountain, but equally we discovered that it was probably supernatural in nature rather than cult behaviour, because that woman just straight up, in a trance, stabbed herself in the neck. And we witnessed the sort of scale of it as well, with 70 plus yeah. people showing up in a night. Unexpected. That's fair. Um... Cool. Character development. Does anyone feel like you developed your character this session? And if so, how? Reginald talked back to a gentleman when he thought the gentleman was doing something unbelievably stupid. <laughs> That's yeah. very true, actually. E- equally, I caved into doing something ungentlemanly when Reginald refused to dig a ditch for me. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of compromises all around. Uh, fair, fair. Anything else? I got into the flow with my wheelchair. Yeah, I think you're kind of rocking bitter, paranoid, um, knife victim guy, <laughs> honestly. Sorry. Can't sit just tonight. Cool. Um, Excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well this session? And if so, how? Uh, I think um, Ollie's uh, uh, communist just general kind of disdain, and then finding was it uh, solace with um, uh, with Creed uh, over over Magnet. That was very good. Uh, and, and equally, um, Creed's just, I'm curious to a fault. About <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious as well. But why, sir? For science, dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely oh, yeah. fair. 
Um, On that note, go back to character development. I feel I'm like regrettably starting to feel a kinship with our Holborn <laughs> and its ways of science. <laughs> I suppose it's not kind something of... I'm fond of, but it's happening, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of you've kind of got mages with in the same party, but with different. I forget what they call them in mage, uh, but with different. Um, not oh. Yeah, is it dynamism? No, the thing. Um, no, the, dynamism is one. Yeah, it's um, the way you work your magic. Quintess, not quintessence. No, the way um, you work your magic. Paradigms. Yeah. You, you've got mages with different paradigms who are forced to get on with each other but don't really like it type of a thing. Like, Ollie derives his science powers from one route. You derive your magnetist powers from technically a very similar route. And yet in practice, the two cannot operate together at all. Though in mage, they kind of potentially could. Well, um, one's dynamism, one's questing. <laughs> and then the rest of us are stasis. Good old Victorian stasis. Um, I say on another note of uh, roleplay, uh, I think Benji's like going more into like the actual. Um, I say uh, like without sounding bad, like the support side of the batsman character with like I say more flavor things. Like uh, he knew that I was gonna smoke, and he had already prepared like a smoke for me before I could even say what I was going to do, sort of thing. Yeah. That's fair. Um, any other yeah, extensive awesome. roleplay awards to get back onto that? I, uh, I mean, I just feel like the... Uh, I mean, you missed the giant RP chat, but the... Uh, yeah, I'm so but sorry. What happened with it essentially was all of the <laughs> officer characters being big old officers, and <laughs> it was just kind of great hearing that back and forth between, you know, Nick, Creed... And and Carl and then and, and obviously Benji, but he's not an officer character. But it was all great, basically. Oh yeah, no, I've been I've actually I should have mentioned this in feedback. I've been really impressed with the the RP this week. Like everyone's got their accents down to a T. Um, the the characters have been popping out a little bit. Like I've I've had to gently move the plot on in places, not because you were necessarily dicking around, especially towards that latter half of the session. Not because you were necessarily dicking around, but because you were like getting into quite long role play arguments. Uh, which is which is really cool to see, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I want to hear more of this, but I also want to like make sure that they get shit done, so they don't feel like they just chatted shit as posh people for the whole session. <laughs> uh, I actually missed one of the excellence of role plays there. Sorry, I've got Tango is ruthlessly, and then the sentence just ends. Oh, curious, ruthlessly curious. There we go. Sorry. Um, fair, fair. Any final excellence of role play awards? I think Carl did pretty well. Playing the sort of slightly exasperated officer who's reduced to a a very diminished role now he's stuck in a wheelchair. <laughs> Doesn't feel right, god damn it. Entirely fair. Especially as you're, you come from a position of power and influence within the Order, so you know about all this magic shit, and then your compatriots just run off and start poking it. <laughs> no! <laughs> stop! Why do you do this thing? I mean, of the two people doing the most messing around, one has four dots of a cult and the other has five. <laughs> they, they knew what they were doing. Not really, but enough to know that it was probably not smart. There's a saying that the most people who drown know how to swim. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> So, I make that out to be nine experience points for session number 34. That's two points of plot progression, discovering the blood sacrifice, and uh, also discovering just the scale of things. Uh, three points of character development. That's Reginald talking back to a gentleman, Tango compromising on doing ungentlemanly things, Sebastian Thornbury's paranoid wheelchair moments, Tango feeling kinship with Twite, uh, and Reginald playing support character to the various gentlemen much better this session. Uh, three points, excellence of roleplay, that's Holman Twite's communist disdain, Tango being ruthlessly curious, just about everyone's RP voices, and Sebastian's exasperation after being ruined, uh, wounded, wounded, plus one standard. Damn commies. Which brings us on... Nine. Yes. Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? <coughs> no, but that's mostly because I was rather distracted throughout all of it, so I can't exactly remember a specific 
Uh, you see, I'm both dying and have a child who is refusing to sleep. So <laughs> Entirely reasonable. It, um, specific quotes will be slightly lacking. Ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, Cree, do you have any highlights for that session? Sure. Uh, the, the, the Thousand Year Edge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in relation to? Uh, a fancy rock we found, and the innuendos that followed. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a, uh, that wasn't a highlight, right? Cool, gotcha. A fancy rock we found, and the innu- uh, and the innuendos that followed sounds like a terrible seventies erotica, <laughs> or a really bad goosebumps like book. I don't know why. I can see that. Mm. Um, whole burn does a sweet burn on Tango. <laughs> there were a lot of good burns this week. Yeah. They were very good in character burns as well. Uh, anything else? And either Sebastian's justified paranoia or Sebastian's paranoia is justified. Every time he's been paranoid about something, it's been on the money. <laughs> Perfectly correct. <laughs> I quite like that that nature because it turns um, being genre savvy, but in a way that gives you social disadvantages, into a way to generate willpower, which is which is quite nice. I think there's a lot of the willpower, uh, willpower, a lot of the um, natures and demeanors that are they're a little bit noob trappy. Things that like attract you because they sound cool, but they're in practice pretty hard to role play and not great mechanically. Um, like no shade on Ollie, but I think Enigma generally is something that attracts people but actually isn't that great um eye of the storm is another one that does that um and you compare this to fucking um traditionalist uh traditionalist is not one that sounds cool no one no one looks at traditionalist and goes yep of course uh but it's it's a good role play aid and it's uh, uh, mechanically good for generating willpower, providing you stick to it. So it works quite well. I really like the natures and demeanors. I'm a sucker for like one word phrases to role play off of. Yeah, they, I, they work really well. I, I'd almost like keywords for this type of thing for, for Dark Heresy. I don't know. Well, if they ever get around to doing third edition, I'm going to buy the shit out of it like almost immediately, even though it will inevitably set in 42k. <laughs> Uh, that was it for me. For the uh, fair. You're Nicholas. You don't you? want to embrace Primaris. I'm just not interested in Primaris. I, no, I, I, know. I know they're getting better, I, but they're, they're just. That's that 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 pace 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 pace. Okay. Pace, joke. You're Nicholas. Do you have any highlights for that session? Um, how much time? Sorry. It's sandwich time. time. Oh, it's sandwich time. God damn it. I'm going to have to report back to the XRPG's channel at work. <laughs> um, any of the highlights? Um, uh, science! You did yell science in last week. There was a lot of science yelling. Uh, any of the highlights for Nicholas? Uh, that'll do. Cool, cool. Uh, Mr. Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? Hmm. Um... It's a low light in the sense that it was sad to do, but gunning down all those civilians felt very appropriately uh, morose, I suppose. Very grim, very dark. Like a, a duty we had to fulfill, but a horrible one. That's fair. A, um, yeah, the, the growing, the, the, the begrudging kinship between himself and Tango, between Holborn and Tango. Yes, during our next game, set in the 30s, during the communist uprising in Britain, I look forward to the two of you being uh, <laughs> on opposite sides of the conflict, yet having a good working relationship. We just don't talk about religion or politics. It's fine. Um, the, uh... Also, Tango and Twite absolutely sounds like either a law a law firm or a company that imports fruit from overseas. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Sorry, anything else? They have a lovely townhouse in the middle of uh, in the middle of the city. Yeah. Um, deciding what to do with the shambling zombies. I know. I just thought it was funny. That was a whole segment. Uh, I missed it. I'm sad. 
I wouldn't worry. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it in the recording. Oh, no, actually, maybe. Did, the re- did your recording fail? No, the recording kept going. He says, hopefully. Yeah, the recording kept going, but because it's just recording my my audio input and output, yeah. um, awesome. it, when my connection drops, it drops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else? I haven't, got, I haven't got anything else. Cool, cool. Carl, any, any highlights for that session? Curiosity nearly kills the communist. <laughs> 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 Anything else? Uh, well, I mean, like, I'm not sure if uh, Ollie's one covers it, but um, debating the ethics of murdering someone before they can commit suicide. I feel like that's different enough. Fair, fair. Uh, anything else? Uh, the batsman providing a smoke before even being asked. <laughs> that was quite good. I don't think it's a batsman, is it? Is it? It's it's singular. It's just Batman. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's great. Uh, I yeah. love the idea that most British officers in World War One had a personal Batman. And and if you don't know how that word is pronounced when you read that for the first time, the sentence sounds a bit odd. Mm. The mountain rises and swells. God damn it! Carl. God damn it! You're the one who made a penis joke. I didn't make a penis joke. You did. I did. God damn it, Benji! This is your script. Ah. Mm. Uh, any any other highlights? Your penis jokes live through me. Uh, 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 um, no, I mean there was something else, but I can't remember it. <laughs> okay, in that case, I think my highlight for the week is going to be immediately sacrifice his own blood to spook. With a twist that it Creed, wasn't young Nicholas. Creed this goes time. full young Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I've been close before. <laughs> you've you've done some very heretical actions previously, but uh, nothing nothing in a while, and nothing on the full on young Nicholas. Yeah, the spooky face told me it was human, so I killed people what? for it. Hey, hey, that was legitimate. That was it? Huh? <laughs> I agree with you. It was legitimate. You should continue to do what all spooky faces tell you forever. Uh, any final highlights from anyone? Um, yeah. Um, the werewolf horror becomes zombie horror returning to werewolf horror. Are you all thinking- Unfortunately. you oh, sorry. I was going to say, unfortunately, that, that was the least wordy I could make it. No, I think that, that's got a nice flow to it. Uh, I was going to say, I think, are y'all are y'all thinking of them as zombies because it dehumanizes them slightly and makes you feel better for massacring seventy plus innocent people? I mean, as we said, we did like have a good debate over the ethics, like, and then we decided to shoot them. Oh, come on, basically everyone here, every single person here, with the exception of the communist, is going to support the Tory party. And at this point, the Tory party is what three years away from Tony Pandy. And and I, I'm actually counting the dead, and I am not referring to them as zombies. Um, I was just given a very good uh, point of view to say this is why we should kill them, and I agreed. So we should kill the people. You know, fun oh. fact on the subject of, of uh, dehumanizing people before you killed them. Pretty sure you killed... I mean, we, we said 70 plus, and young Nicholas made us kind of settle on 75, and I'm okay with that. I believe... The white phosphorus attack in Spec Ops: The Line kills seventy-four. Oh, I and, didn't know. You put and no, good. if we beat, the, we beat Captain Walter's speed record, if the line does, you definitely didn't. It took you hours. Uh, and if the li- the li- I don't know about you all, but the line, a lot of the epilogue to that game is burnt into my head. Um, it just lives there, fucking rent-free. And it's a fantastic line, story. It really is. And the line, your orders killed seventy-four innocent people, is potentially applicable. Not to poke too much. But, ah, uh, I was wrong. Tony Pandy was in fact 1910. So yeah, this this shit's not new. So... <laughs> where, uh, I almost asked, where are we at then? Yes, it's next session. Welcome to session number 35, folks. No, cool. Thank you all for a very entertaining session number 34. Does anyone have any final words for the recording? Fuck Winston Churchill. <laughs>